Thank you for joining me. Um, I'm going to be, my name's Mary Whiteside. I'm going to be talking about games-based learning and assessment. Um, and just to let you know, we have a lovely film crew at the back who are recording us, and this video will be available on Cambridge English TV later. So, games-based learning and assessment. Let's start off with, what is a game? So, outside English language teaching, a game can be anything. It can be digital, can be analog, can be a card game. But most importantly, a game is fun. If you ask people for a definition of a game, you'll probably find 10 different definitions. Um, the one that we've been using at Cambridge Assessment is from Kalwa, and his description is, a game is voluntary. You do a game because you want to. So getting back to the fun element. Um, a game is separate to your routine life. So you do other things that you wouldn't do in life. You don't know the outcome. You might win, you might lose, um, but you don't know at the beginning of the game. It has its own rules. So particular examples, card games. You have particular rules to follow while you're playing the game. And it's separate to real life. It's an imaginary space. But when you look at games in English language teaching, maybe they don't all follow these rules. So if you look, you've got great games things where you can practice flashcards, you can collaborate and practice language. These aren't really the same as games you play outside the classroom, though. So here, it's important to think of the difference between activities which have elements of games, so gamified activities, and games which you play anyway, outside or inside the classroom. Um, at Cambridge Assessment, we carried out some research to look at the kinds of um, digital games that teachers use, or gamified activities, and we found that there was lots and lots of uh, flashcards, so things like Quizlet, great for motivation, um, and lots of mini games, practicing things like spelling, that kind of thing. But often these were very low level, so there's lots of games which are great for beginners and for vocabulary, but there's, there's less available at a higher level. So maybe we should be looking not just at games or activities with elements of games, maybe we need to look at actual digital games that people use. So for your students, if you ask them to name a digital game, what would they say? Subway, maybe. Uh, Subway? Uh, what about? Candy Crush. What about Minecraft? OK. 24, no, 28 million copies of Minecraft have been sold. It's the most uh, popular paid for game. It's not just Minecraft, though. Uh, this is World of Warcraft, and this has over 20 million sold as well. Other games, Sims, again, more than 20 million. So should we be using games for learning, or do you think it's not suitable for some groups? So who uses games? If you looked at a typical age, do you think it would be someone who is 15, 20, 25? So for everyone, okay, and the typical age for a user, what do you think, 20? Younger, older? Okay, so younger than 20, male, female, or equal? Okay, so the average age is uh, 37. I know, it's a bit of a surprise. Um, and it's very similar, the split. In, in lots of studies, they show very similar stats, so around around 48% women and 52% men. So in fact, games are everywhere in every context. So if it's used by people, it should be used for language learning as well. But how do you use a game that wasn't designed for language learning in the classroom? So for Minecraft, um, it's a great game to play. You can build things, you can uh, work together. There's not much language in the game but it's still a really easy way to, to use it is to look at all the things around Minecraft. So 28 million copies of Minecraft have been sold, but what is more popular is videos of people playing Minecraft. So on YouTube, um, do you know how many videos on YouTube there are about Minecraft? I don't either. <laughs> but, but I do know that there have been 47 billion views of these videos. So, 
that's a lot of authentic language. It's people talking about Minecraft and using it. So here, we have natural language input, so it must be usable in the classroom. It's not just listening, lots of blogs, lots of books, lots of Wikipedia wikis. So if you want to use games in the classroom, there is lots of authentic language around it. World of Warcraft, the same. Lots of information online. So to use a game in the classroom, it doesn't have to be designed specifically for the classroom, but what you need to do is make sure it has lots of authentic language use. And this might be in the game, or it might be around the game, like the YouTube videos. You can then ask your learners to, to produce new language. Maybe your learners can make a video about how to, about playing Minecraft. Maybe they make their own wiki or their own blog. Loads of ideas. Anything that is produced naturally, they can produce. Also, for it to be used in language learning, lots of opportunity to practice. So again, think about all the things you could ask your students to do, because there's lots of things they can do. They can tell you how to use Minecraft. That's a good activity. Or maybe you can find a game where actually the game has lots of communication in it. So this game is called Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. It's a, an information gap. So some of the people have information about how to defuse a bomb. Some of the people have virtual reality and have to follow the instructions. So maybe this would be a good way to practice communication for your students. Or you can look for games that specifically are designed for language teaching, um, but follow the rules of a game. So things like this. This is a game called Ruby Ray. It's a story about Ruby in her spaceship. She's crashed. She's looking for her robot um, best friend, Molly. She has to do tasks throughout the, the game. And she can, uh, you can translate, so you can learn English, but you can switch to your own language, so children are immersed in it, and they can learn that way. So what about challenges? If you're using games in the class, you do have to think about some things. Any games that are collaborative, can be really interesting, but you have to think about who your students collaborate with. So just normal things about online safety, age appropriacy, all these things are really important when you're thinking about using games in the classroom. So that's for learning. What about for language assessment? Do you think games can be used for language assessment? So there's lots of reasons why it, it should be used, because it's a natural communicative environment. It's contextualized, so the good thing about games is that there's a context, a story. And also, students are very engaged, or learners are very engaged. So at Cambridge Assessment, we've started working on this. This is an assessment, um, but it's in a video game. So the idea is students complete the tasks. This is Cara, she needs to find her grandmother, and she has to complete language tasks to find her. So the idea is it doesn't feel like an assessment, so it's stealth assessment. People, children are doing the tasks without really feeling it's an assessment. Let me show you a short clip of it.
So do you think your student would like to be assessed through a game like that? Okay, that's great. See some nods. Um, we asked this from a group in Spain. So we took this... Oops. We took this um, game assessment and we showed it to some students and we asked them what they thought and we saw them using it. Would you like to find out what happened? Okay, um, you can find out by going to our site, Cambridge English Beta. We've written up a description of what we did and who we talked to. We're busy getting the results of that um, research and so when we publish it, you'll be able to find out what the students thought and, and what we learned from it. But generally, we found that students thought it was a, a good idea. So did teachers and parents. If you would like more information on anything I've been talking about, so about the games-based assessment, Cambridge English Beta, come to our stand. Or if you would like to do some more CPD on Monday when Aya Chapel has finished, we have a, a free online course about using games and English language teaching. There should be a leaflet on your seat in front of you. Please feel free to join and to share it. Um, or maybe you'd like more gamified activities. So this is a, a great app, quiz your English, very addictive, good to practice your um, IELTS vocabulary, or we've got a version to practice your digital skills. So lots of things to do when IATEPL is over next week. Thank you very much. <laughs>